Hello, my name is Whiteout. Now a question that I'm commonly asked is, where do I get my glue for creating latex objects and doing repairs? And for a while, I was recommending this stuff. This is from a company called Eurocatsuits.com, and uh, I've used their glue for a number of years. It's worked out really well. The main issue with this though is Eurocatsuits is based in the Czech Republic. And every time I've ordered something from them, the shipping has taken at minimum minimum a month to get to the United States. So if you just have a small hole that you need to repair, waiting a month for the glue is pretty ridiculous. So I'm looking at other options and one of the most common ones in the latex scene is this. This is the best test white rubber paper cement. This is what everyone seems to be recommending when it comes to latex glues. The problem with this though is you need to add a solvent in order to thin out the glue a little bit because as it comes like this, it's a bit too thick to use on latex. So that's where this comes in, the Bestine solvent, uh, which is basically just heptane, but you need to get a ratio of rubber cement to heptane in order to get the glue usable for latex. Now the problem with that is, looking at all the different forum posts online and talking with different people, there's no real ratio that anyone has recommended when it comes to combining the rubber cement with the solvent. Some sources I've seen have recommended a one-to-one -one ratio of rubber cement to solvent, while other places recommend using about 15 to 25% of the solvent to your rubber cement. So there's no real concise answer on what ratio of rubber cement to solvent to mix the together for making the perfect latex glue, which is where this video comes in. So in this video, I'm going to be performing four different tests on three different solutions of rubber cement. You can see the first one here, we got a 50-50 split between rubber cement and heptane. And then go into here, we've got an 80-20 split with roughly 24-25 milliliters of rubber cement to five to six milliliters of heptane. So we'll see which one of these solution combinations is the best when it comes to gluing this rubber. So now there's gonna be four different tests that we're going to look at. The first two are more qualitative. We're gonna be looking at the consistency of it, how easy is it to stir up and spread. And then we're gonna be looking at the stickiness, which how well can I stick two pieces of rubber together? From there, we're gonna be looking at the reactivity, which is what these uh, thin sheets are for. Whenever you apply glue to rubber, it tends to curl up and bend. So I'm curious if the different ratios of rubber cement to solvent make a difference when it comes to how that rubber bends up and reacts to the solution. And then lastly, we're gonna look at longevity. How long does it take for a 30 milliliter solution? Each of these are gonna be 30 milliliters. How long does it take for it to dry out? So let's find out. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna try the 50-50 rubber cement to heptane mixture first, and we'll go from there down to the 80-20 mix and see which one I prefer the most. This heptane does not pour well. I just made a mess. has a very suspicious consistency to it. <laughs> All right, so we have our 50-50 solvent to rubber cement solution completed. Let's start our stopwatch. This is a very, very thin solution. The spreadability of it is almost like water. Um, it's easy to spread out, but it's also hard to maintain because it globs a lot further past the area of where the brush is supposed to be. So you have to take a lot more care when it comes to doing that. And you can see it's starting to curl up a little bit there, but I have some tape underneath so that's preventing it from doing it because I want to try and get an accurate glue. But let's also try the bendability test with this thin piece here and we can measure how far up it bends. Pretty good curl up. 
I'm assuming the higher concentrations of heptane are going to cause it to curl further. Measuring the height of how much this curled up though, it's about one and a quarter centimeters. Let's separate that. There's a bit of a spread, like I said, because it, it moved so quickly, it got stuck to the tape as well. I think that one's a bit too thin for my liking, but um, let's see how well glues. It feels pretty firm. Let's let that dry for an hour. So now we're going to be doing the 65-35 split which is about 20 milliliters of rubber cement to 10 milliliters of heptane. It takes a little bit more to spread it out, which I think is, is better because it makes it more easily manageable with the brush. Um, it's not leaking out into areas where I don't want the glue to be. So I'm already just by doing a little bit of spreading around with the brush, I'm already liking this ratio of glue a lot better as opposed to the 50-50 ratio. So all right, glue's been applied to that. I see a little bit more curling though. I think maybe it's the rubber cement that causes the curling, not the heptane. Let's try the patch here though and give it a two inch application and see how that works. Again, very, pretty pronounced, pretty instantaneous one. So even though it looks pretty curled up, it actually didn't curl up as high as the previous ratio. This is about 0.7 millimeters in height. It still is pretty pronouncedly curved. All right, just like the previous one, it's been about five minutes. You can see the curling of this is, again, less pronounced. With the 50-50 split, the curl on this one is completely gone flat. Yeah, you can see it's better with the tape because uh, unlike the previous one where it sort of leaked out onto the tape and caused uh, unnecessary stickiness, this one still did a little bit over there. This one was a lot easier to, to manage when it came to where I wanted the application of the uh, solution to go. All right, good stuff. And I'll leave that off to dry for an hour as well while we move on to our last solution, which is the 80-20 mix. In this case, roughly 24 to 25 milliliters of rubber cement to five to six milliliters of heptane. Spreadability wise, it's very similar to the 6535. I really don't see a, uh, a ton of difference between those two. That's pretty good. Let's let that dry for five minutes. Let's give the curl test a shot over here. And that's one centimeter on the dot. So they were all really curled pretty much in the same ballpark. The 6535 one seemed to have the best when it came to rubber curls, uh, but this isn't too bad either. All right, we are back. It's been about five minutes, and already I can tell that this one, the 80-20 split with the most rubber cement, has dried the fastest out of all of them. So something to keep in mind, I think the more solvent you use, the longer it'll take to dry. So now I'm going to give each of these swatches here an hour to fully dry and then we can put them up against the little strength test, see which one I like the most. But just from a workability standpoint, just from what I've done so far, uh, I really like the 80-20 split. Um, I felt it was the easiest to work with when it came with using the paintbrush. Uh, but I also liked the 6535 for the fact that it didn't dry as quickly. So personally, I would do a healthy medium, maybe do a 70-30 split between the rubber cement and the heptane. Uh, but let's come back with the final results before I make that determination. All right, just so you can see up close a little bit more, 
Uh, here's the consistency of the 50-50 one. You can see this is very thin, pours super easy. Going on to the 65-35 here, we can see it's got a bit more thickness to it. Um, looks a, a little bit thicker once it pours out. And then going on here to the 80-20, this one, the consistency is very thick, um, almost cum like and uh, yeah. So I got these up against the windowsill here, getting some fresh air and some sunlight. That should dry them out a lot quicker. Uh, but like I said, I'm really curious to see which one of these solutions will last the longest. My bet is on the 50-50 one, but we'll find out. All right, so it's been about an hour since we first glued our swatches together. And we can see starting off at the 50-50, I noticed something right off the bat. You can see that the glue leaked out in between the seam between the orange and the black latex. You can see that little bit of white rubber in there. Uh, and that's what I was going off of from a usability standpoint. Uh, the 50-50 split is just too liquidy. It has too much of a water-like consistency to really accurately spread around and I can see it, you know, seeping in between those seams. It's just not going to look as professional. As far as the glue quality itself, though, it is very nice. There are no bumps or anything in there. Uh, and strength wise, that's holding together pretty well. Going on here to the 65-35 split. Uh, this one was a lot easier to work with with the paintbrush. You can see nothing has leaked out on the sides of the seams there. Uh, and again, we're getting a pretty pretty strong seam on there and then lastly going to the 80 20 split uh, again as far as gluing goes i like this one the most i thought it was the easiest to work with with the paintbrush with that thicker consistency uh, we have no leakage out on either side of the seams and the bond is holding together quite nice and firm so going back to our ratios here, we can see starting off at the 50-50 one, that one's been going for about an hour and a half now. Here's the laps that I did for each of these. I created a new lap whenever I uh, brewed up the new ratio. So going off of the one by one though, where it's 50% uh, heptane, 50% rubber cement, it's still very usable. I, I have not noticed much drying happening at all. Going on now to the 65-35 split though, there is some definitely noticeable tackiness. Um, at this point, I wouldn't consider this glue very usable. You're gonna get some serious chunks of rubber cement in there. Uh, and then going on to the 20-80 split, this one here is um, almost completely dry. We can see there's a, a, some big noticeable clumps happening on the spoon itself. Um, this one's, it's still, you know, still has somewhat of a consistency, but it's, oh, it's stuck to it now. It's very dry in comparison to the other two. So adding more solvent will increase the longevity as far as how quick it takes to dry out for the solution. So looking at everything in total, comparing the swatches and the ratios of the heptane to the rubber cement, I would personally go with somewhere between the 80-20 split and the 65-35 split. Like I said, I'm most likely going to be doing a 30-70 split, so I get the best of both worlds between the 80-20 and the 65-35. Uh, I thought as far as the spreadability goes, the consistency of the glue, I liked that one the most. I found it the easiest to work with when it came to using the paintbrush. Um, as far as dryability goes, you get some of the benefits of the 50-50 mix where it lasts a little bit longer in as far as longevity and lifespan goes. But just from an all-around practicality standpoint, I feel that the 70-30 ratio would be the best for most people when it comes to mixing their rubber cement with their solvent. So thank you all for watching. You can pick these, this uh, rubber cement and the uh, heptane solvent, the bestine solvent. You can get those off Amazon. That's where I got this. Uh, but most art supply stores will also sell this as well. So it should be a quick trip to the store and you can pick this up as opposed to the previous stuff that I was using where again, took a month at minimum to ship to the United States. So I hope this helps out. Y'all can make your own glue and uh, stop asking me where I get my glue from because now I got a video on it. <laughs> Anyways, 
Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.